and welcome to Biostat Squid. In this tutorial we will learn how to detect and remove doublets from a Sura object in R using doublet detection tools for single cell RNA-seq data. If you haven't yet, check out my previous video on doublet detection using SC Doublet Finder, where I go over a short intro on doublets, the data set I'm using, and finally we run SC Doublet Finder to identify doublets. In part two of this doublet detection series, we will use another doublet detection tool for single cell RNA seq data called Doublet Finder. Again, I won't really go into the methods behind this tool. You have a brief summary of how Doublet Finder works in this other video, but I encourage you to check out the tool's GitHub for further documentation on how to use the tool. And you can also read more in the publication. I leave the links in the description below. As always, you can find the code I am using in this tutorial at biostatsquid.com, where you can also find a step-by-step -step explanation of the code. Or you can just get the entire script from BiostatSquid's uh, GitHub page. So if you're ready, let's dive in. So let's pick up where we left off. Doublet Finder is an OR package that predicts doublets in single cell RNA se sequencing data. And one of the biggest advantages is that it is now compatible with Sura. One important thing to note is that you need to run it on a per sample basis, same as SC Doublet Finder. So the way I have it set up is that I split the Sura object based on the sample ID and then run Doublet Finder on each of the samples. Easy. So first let's split our object. Next, we will apply get singlets, which I mentioned in the first tutorial. Get singlets is a custom function I created to run all the different doublet finder steps on each of the samples. So if your original Sura object had five samples, the split function will return a list of five objects and you would run get singlets on each of the elements of your list. So basically per sample. So my custom function does quite a few things, but we will go through it step by step. Let's run it because it takes a while. And meanwhile, I'll explain what it's doing. So first, let's go back to Doublet Finder. What do we need to run Doublet Finder? It essentially needs a Sura object, a fully processed Sura object that is after normalized data, find variable genes, scale data, run PCA and run TSNE, and four additional arguments, PCs, PN, PK, and NXP. PCs is the number of statistically significant principal components, and we will automatically select it for each sample separately. PN is the number of generated artificial doublets. And as you can see, the default is set to 25%, since this parameter does not seem to have a big effect on Doublet Finder's results. So we will go with the default. PK is not default and has to be adjusted for each single cell RNA-seq dataset, for each sample essentially. But Doublet Finder offers a way to estimate the optimal PK, which is what we're going to use. And finally, nexp, which defines the proportion of artificial k nearest neighbors threshold used to make final doublet or singlet predictions. We can estimate this value from the cell loading density, so the number of cells that went into the sequencer, and we can also adjust it according to the estimated proportion of homotypic doublets. Homotypic doublets are just doublets made up of two cells of the same cell type. Okay, so we already have one out of five parameters. Now let's figure out the other three. First, the Sura object needs to be fully processed. The Sura object I'm using has not yet been processed, so let's take care of this, of that now. This is what these four lines do. They're just the standard Sura uh, workflow. Great, another argument figured out. 
Now let's check the optimal number of PCs or principal components. These lines basically calculate the optimal or the optimal maximum number of PCs to include. I have a more thorough explanation in the blog post, but basically it identifies the first principal component where the cumulative percentage of variance explained is greater than 90% and the contribution of that individual component is less than 5%. And then it identifies the which consecutive principal component has a large drop of more than 10% or 0.1 in their percentage contribution of variance. And then it takes the minimum of either. If these lines are a bit confusing, check out my blog post for a more thorough explanation. But the main message here is that it's finding the optimal number of PCs that capture the variance in our data set. Okay, let's move on. Next, it finishes pre-processing with the minimum number of PCs that it just identified. So you probably recognize these lines as part of the standard Sura workflow. Nice. So now things get a tiny bit tricky. We now want to determine the PK argument. So the following functions basically introduce artificial doublets in varying proportions, merge them with our data set, and then preprocess the data, and then calculate the proportion of artificial nearest neighbors for different combinations of PN and PK. This allows us to identify the optimal PK value. And finally, we estimate the homotypic doublet proportion. For this, we need to know our, our cell types. I'm using the clusters uh, cell types, assuming that cells that were clustered together are of the same cell type. The next function gets the proportion of homotypic doublets. And I take the multiple rates, which depend on the number of recovered cells. So this information, um, which I have up here, I got from 10x, which tells you how many doublets you expect for a given number of cells in a sample. So if you're using a different platform, you will have different numbers of expected doublets, or perhaps you you or your sequencing facility already can tell you what is the expected proportion of doublets. Once we have the multiplet rate, we can multiply it um, by the number of cells to get the number of expected multiplets. The number of doublets is then calculated with the following formula. This one here. Amazing! So we got through the toughest bit. Finally, we can run doublet finder really easily by just filling out the different parameters we computed. It will be added to the Sura object with this name, doublet finder, um, but it's not really necessary. And finally, this function just returns the doublet finder metadata column with the cell IDs as row names. Cool. So that's all the steps the get singlets function performs. So now, um, if I don't know if it's finished, let's have a look. It's still computing. So we might need to wait for a bit. Again, depending on the size of your Sura object, it might take more or less time. Okay, so once the function is done, remember we ran get singlets on each of the elements of our list, of our list of Sura objects, which are divided up by sample ID. So essentially, we're applying this to each sample. Once we have that, if we take a look at the results, we will have a list of data frames for every sample. Um, oops, I printed out everything, but um, we can maybe check this out. So as you can see, we have a list of data frames per sample, and we have the um, um, cell IDs as row names, and the doublet finder labels here as another metadata column. Cool, so now we bind them all into a single data frame, 
and we set the row names to the actual row names of the data frame. Um, so now if we have a look, we should get something like that. So just one data frame with all the cell IDs and then the doublet finder results um, or labels. Cool. So now we can actually add them to the original Sura object with add metadata. So we will add it. Nice. So we can also have a look at violin plots with different QC stats as we did uh, last time, which separate, um, separate the singlets and doublets. So as you can see, again, we expect cells marked as doublet to have a higher N feature or N count and or N count probably both um, compared to those marked as singlets. Whereas there shouldn't be such a big difference in the ribosomal or mitochondrial genes. We can also get the numbers per sample, like we did last time with a doublet summary. There we go. Um, this time the number of doublets is much lower in percentage, 2%. So again, we might want to fine tune the different parameters. For example, for um, SC doublet finder, I just went with the defaults. So it might be something to look into. We can, we can also get the numbers per sample. In this case, it's more like 2% or 3% of doublets per sample. And we can compare them to the results we found using SC doublet finder, the other tool, which we will do in the next video. Squid-tastic. Thank you very much for watching. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Let me know what you thought of this tutorial. And don't forget, you can vote for your favorite topics at bias.squid.com or just leave me a comment below if you'd like to see other stuff. Have a squintastic day and see you in the next one.